Hello. This is Heidi Perryman, and I'm going to talk with you about um, some urban beavers in Martinez, California. We have been living with beavers since 2007, and Martinez is an old town. It's the county seat of um, of Contra Costa County. It's actually the place where John Muir lived in California. And uh, the creek that we have goes right through the middle of town. It goes all the way out under the um, into the Carquinez Strait and under the Golden Gate Bridge. Um, at the time that the beavers moved in, which was 2006, we had just a dad beaver and a mom beaver. And they built a dam and a lodge. Now, not all beavers will do this, but our city was concerned about the particular location of this dam. This was a city that often flooded anyway, and they were afraid that it would elevate the risk. And they proposed that the beavers should be trapped. But as you can see, these were fairly easy to see beavers. So all the children on their way to school, all the businessmen on their way to get coffee in the morning, uh, they could all see these beavers. And to top it off, Mom Beaver at that time was pregnant, and she gave birth to four of these, which were also very visible, also very adorable, and in the center of town. So um, the city kind of realized there might be a little bit of a trouble getting rid of these beavers. And people were getting very engaged. They were really interested. You could sit at Starbucks in the morning and have your local coffee, and you could actually hear them playing. You could watch them in person. And it was a lot of fun, and people really enjoyed it. So around this time, I was starting to realize that our beavers were protected by the opposite of camouflage. That is, the more people that saw them and cared about them, the safer they were getting. And there was a big meeting where 200 people showed up to discuss the fate of the beavers, and people said, keep them and figure out how to do it. And the city responded by appointing a subcommittee to study the issue, and uh, the subcommittee had 90 days to decide whether beavers could live in an urban setting. And the first thing the subcommittee did was to hire this gentleman. This is Skip Lyle. He's the inventor of the beaver deceiver. And he came in and he took the dam down by a couple feet and he installed a flow device or a special pipe at the dam. And the way this works is just by gravity and it moves the water from upstream to downstream and it um, does it in a way that the beavers don't know that the water's leaving. Um, and this thing that looks like a cage, it's not a cage for the beavers, it's a cage for the pipe. Now, since this was installed in the early days of 2008, nobody in Martinez, California has worried about flooding because it has worked, it has done its job, and um, our beavers have built only in areas where they're visible by the community. And it's a lot of fun to be able to see these behaviors and see this kind of wildlife right in the middle of town, a couple feet from a parking meter. Our beavers eat tulies, they eat cottonwood, they eat willow, they eat um, fennel, they eat blackberries. The trees that we need to protect, we can wrap with wire or we can paint with sand. And what you're doing is painting with the latex paint and then co adding mason sand. And beavers don't like the gritty texture. But it's important to remember that beaver chew trees are also going to coppice which is an old forestry term, which means to hard cut back a tree so that it grows back bushy and more dense. And what we know is that this coppicing produces ideal habitat for migratory and songbirds to nest, so that as the number of beavers go up, it turns out the number of birds also go up. And that's been really important for us. Our beavers are extremely social and they let us see a lot of their lives. Um, both parents uh, raise the kids, parents mate for life. Here's footage of Dad Beaver carrying two young kids on his back. And here's footage of Mom coming to check on two slightly older kids just to see how they're doing. 
So I like to try and teach about the idea of beaver as a keystone species specifically based on what we saw in Martinez. Uh, Native Americans called beaver the sacred center, and that makes sense. The dam trapping sediment because it gets broken down and uh, the organic material gets eaten by tiny bugs that we can't see. But it's important to remember that also beavers are constantly moving and removing mud. And what we know is that this creates a pond floor that has many different like marks in it or like the surface of the moon. And these different elevations turn out to appeal to different invertebrates. So we end up with a bug bloom at a beaver pond, and um, that means that everything that eats those insects uh, comes to partake at the beaver pond. And that means everything that eats those things that eat the insects also come. So we've seen better insects, better fish, better mammals, better birds since the beavers have been in Alhambra Creek. And what we're able to do is get photos like this where um, somebody's enjoying some supper and send them off to fish experts. And we've actually been able to identify three new species of fish in Alhambra Creek since the beavers have been there. And that's been um, really important to us and uh, really useful. Um, I love that photo because you can see the beaver is so thick with fish that when he pushes up in the pond, he actually gets one on his eye. More fish mean more fish eaters, and we can see indirectly that um, there are more fish in the creek based on what comes to eat the fish. Um, and it's been really special to see birds use the beaver dam to fish from because the, they'll stand on it and the little fish will hide inside the twigs of the dam and they'll just pick them off. Um, we have identified several new species of birds, and actually um, birds that used to be shy and rarely come to the creek, now they're in evidence all the time, or they're breeding there, and we see them year and year again. Um, it is really a delight to be able to go down and see the beaver dam, and you kind of never know what you're going to see. Um, this is actually a green heron, and uh, you can see he's stretching his neck very long because he's trying to scare away this thing that he's afraid is going to eat his fish. But, of course, the thing is not going to eat his fish. That's a beaver kit, and he's entirely a vegetarian. We never had night heron at the beaver dam. We would never had many species that we see regularly now. Because of the new fish population in that creek, uh, everybody is sort of waiting their turn to get in and, and uh, chow down. We'd never had a hooded merganser at the beaver pond, and uh, this guy came in what we call his play clothes, and he liked it so much he came back with some of his friends, and they liked it so much they came back in their fancy clothes. So we have these ducks every winter in an urban creek two feet away from a parking meter. Uh, our muskrat population went way up when the beavers came. Our visits from river otters went way up when the beavers came. Obviously, they're all there to partake of that fish banquet that's occurring. Uh, we noticed that young river otters like to use that pipe of Skip's flow device to, like a tunnel to go through. And what they'll do is they'll come out inside the filter or cage, and they'll do that because the fish can get in there, but the beavers can't. And so they'll just hunt around in there. Excuse me, they're always neighbors, but they aren't always friends. And uh, what we see is that a lot of tail slapping when otters come around when kits are there. People were very surprised when we saw this face. This is a mink. We hadn't seen mink in Alhambra Creek for 25 years. Um, this guy came in with his mom and four siblings. And uh, at that time, we were noticing we weren't seeing very many muskrats. And I was thinking, wow, what's that about? But it turns out mink's favorite food is muskrat. 
So the mink is there for the muskrat. The muskrat's there for the habitat, and it's all there for the beavers. Um, beavers provide a habitat for everyone else and a banquet for everyone else. It's been really special to be able to see this much wildlife um, eight blocks from my house, uh, to be able to teach others how to observe wildlife and how to respect it and how to coexist with it. Um, You know, I have been very excited by um, the way that our story has excited other creeks and cities to try and do the same thing. Now, back in 2008, we threw the first Beaver Festival. And the reason we did it was just because the city hadn't made a decision yet and we thought it would be harder to do the wrong thing after we'd thrown a party for them. But they turned out, the Beaver Festival turned out to be so much fun that we've had one every year since. And this year is going to be our eighth festival. We try to involve wildlife groups from all over Northern California. Uh, Our attendance right now is about 2,000, 2,500. We try to teach other cities how and why to live with beavers and make sure that they have all the tools they need to do so or know where to look. Um, It's been a really great way to connect with other wildlife groups all around Northern California. We have beaver tours at the festival so that people are able to identify the habitat and know what signs to look for, and then they can come back in the evening or in the morning to look for the beavers themselves. Um, It's been a really great way to celebrate something that started as a problem and turned out to be a remarkable benefit uh, for Alhambra Creek and for the city of Martinez. simple art project. One of the first ones we did was to have children draw things that live in the creek and we were able to fire those and install them on the creek bridge and uh, now that's a public civic art project that is permanent. Um, You know, you could take a simple flag and just draw the creek and the dam and then let kids fill in the biodiversity that moves into that creek. And that's a really great way for them to feel personally engaged in the story. And also you end up with a great flag to be able to fly at events or um, just use to promote uh, the awareness of nature in the creek. So uh, one of the very early activities that we learned kids love to do is to make their own beaver tail. And we do, you know, kits, yearlings, and adults. And we've done simple cardboard and we've done painting leather. It's been a tremendous activity and adults even love to paint their own tails. And we even have a horse that comes to the Beaver Festival every year that wears his own tail as well. By far the most popular activity we do at the Beaver Festival is the Keystone Species Charm Bracelet where kids earn their charm by learning how animals help other species and then they can um, put that on a charm necklace or bracelet and take it with them to remember it's a really great teaching tool Uh, but even very simple activities like making paper bag puppets is a lot of fun and really gets and kids engaged and there's a great opportunity for teaching you know you can teach about teeth being orange you can teeth about teach about webbed feet and it's really nice uh for kids to do they take a lot of pride in it and it costs almost nothing to do as well um why should any city live with beavers well there's a huge ecological benefit and i hope you really hear this so great opportunities for wildlife viewing, great opportunities for education, and great opportunities for tourism. People are always coming to Martinez just because they want to see the beavers. Now, I'm Heidi Perryman. I know the Martinez beavers are worth a damn. And I know that when beavers come to your city or your town, they're going to be worth a damn too. Thank you very much. <laughs>